Hi everyone, welcome to the best movie recapped. Today we want to speak about movie that called Law Abiding Citizen. The story of the movie is about a smart inventor named Clyde Shelton who lost his wife and daughter during a robbery and now he is looking for justice. At the beginning of the movie, we see Shelton spending time with his family at home. The doorbell rings, so Shelton opens the door. Two robbers named Darby and Ames attack him. Then the hands and feet of Shelton and his wife are tied. Darby wounds both of them with a knife. Darby intends to rape Shelton's wife. At this moment Shelton's daughter enters. After seeing Shelton's daughter, Darby decides to do this to her. Shelton loses his wife and daughter. Sometime later, we see the attorneys working on the murder case of Shelton's wife and daughter. Nick Rice is the lead attorney on the case, someone who is obsessed with winning his cases. And he tries to advance the cases in such a way that in the end it is not considered a failure for him. Nick explains to Shelton that due to the lack of evidence and weak laws, he cannot convict both murderers. So Nick agreed with Reynolds, Darby's lawyer, that Darby would testify against his other accomplice, Ames, so that Ames would be executed. But Darby will only be sentenced to three years in prison. Shelton, who watched Darby rape his daughter, cannot accept this. The court is held and an agreement between Nick and Darby's lawyer is made. Nick gets very nervous when Darby talks to him mockingly about escaping justice. And Shelton is shocked that Darby was saved. Ten years later, the time of Ames' execution comes. Just at the same time that Nick's daughter and wife have gone to another event for a live performance. Nick went to execute Ames with her colleague Sarah. In his last words before his death, Ames says that he was not the killer of Shelton's wife and child. Then the execution is carried out. But while this should be done without pain and torture, Ames is severely abused before his death. Everyone is nervous about this. The reason for this happened was tampering with the device, but no one knows who did it. On the solution container of the device, a sentence is written that Darby said at the time of the murder of the Shelton family and in court. You can't fight with fate. Nick goes with some police to arrest Darby. While Darby is using cocaine at home, an unknown caller informs him that the police are coming to arrest him. Darby quickly leaves his house and fires several shots at the policeman. The unknown person calls again and guides Darby. He tells Darby to throw away the gun after cleaning his fingerprints and go to a place where there is a police car. He knocks the police out before Darby arrives. Darby takes the officer's gun and forces him to run away by threatening the police officer. They go to an abandoned place. At this moment, we realize that it was the Shelton police officer who changed his face. Darby wants to shoot at Shelton, but the gun is rigged to poison him. This poison paralyzes Darby and causes him a lot of pain. Shelton locks Darby in a place on the bed at night. He maintains Darby's level of consciousness and pain with various drugs. Then he puts a photo of his daughter and wife in front of him so that he can see them in the last moments of his life. And at the end, he cuts Darby's body parts. Shelton frees the police officer he took hostage and leaves the place. Detective Dunnigan finds Darby's body which is divided into 25 pieces. Nick and Sarah investigate the scene of the accident, which is a warehouse belonging to Shelton, and suspect Shelton. Also, Shelton has been an inventor in the past, so that's a reason to make devices related to Darby's murder. So they go to Shelton's house to arrest him. Shelton surrenders without resistance. The next day, the postman delivers a film to her as a live performance of Nick's daughter. She informs his mother to join her to watch the movie, but her mother does not pay attention. So she starts watching the movie alone. But the film is related to Darby's murder, which was sent by Shelton. Nick goes to meet Shelton for questioning. And before the interrogation, he tells Shelton that he also has a daughter, so he understands Shelton and congratulates him. Over the years, Shelton has studied and learned all the legal rules, so by rejecting the request to have a lawyer, by saying some weaknesses in the laws, he tells Nick that he cannot prove his crime in court. Shelton says that in one case he is willing to make a deal with Nick and confess to the murder. They should change his bed in the prison to a better bed advertised on TV. Nick says that the conditions of the prison are not under his control and leaves the meeting rejecting Shelton's request.
Prosecutor Jonas says he should have accepted the deal. But Nick believes Shelton is playing with them. At this moment, Nick's wife calls and says that they received a video of Darby's murder, which horrified them. Jonas asks Nick to accept the deal, so Shelton's bed will change in prison. In her research, Sarah finds no information about Shelton in the years since his family's death. Shelton has transferred all his state to a company in Panama that does not share information with the US government. Nick believes that Shelton has a reason to hide his state and they must be found somehow. The court is held and Nick requests that bail be denied for Shelton's temporary release due to the possibility of him running away. Citing that there is no evidence to prove his guilt, Shelton explains that the court should allow him to post bail. Nick says he made a deal with Shelton to confess, but Shelton didn't. So the judge accepts Shelton's request according to the legal rules. This moment, Shelton mocks the court rules and the judge's decision, reminding her of the Darby and Ames case and how easily they set criminals free with simple rules. The judge gets angry and denies Shelton's bail request. Nick visits Shelton. Shelton says he sticks to the deal with Nick and confesses to killing Darby and Ames. After getting a confession, Nick plans to leave the meeting. Shelton says he'll make another deal. And for the new deal, he wants a steak from a certain restaurant, and he wants an iPad to listen to music. Nick says he has nothing left to deal because he confessed to the murder. Shelton answers, what about the life of Darby's attorney Reynolds? Nick does not answer and leaves the place. They find out that Reynolds has been missing for three days. Shelton says that Reynolds is still alive and will give them Reynolds' address if they deliver the steak at 1 o'clock. They prepared the steak, but they are eight minutes late. Shelton tells them they shouldn't be late, but gives them the geographic coordinates of Reynolds' location anyway. They quickly go to Reynolds' place in a helicopter. At this moment, Shelton asks his cellmate to join him to eat. Nick and the police arrive late at Reynolds' place and he is dead. Shelton secretly takes the piece of bone left in the steak and suddenly kills his cellmate with the bone. Nick tells Detective Dunnigan that Reynolds' air was set so that if Shelton's food was ready on time, he would survive. Dunnigan says that if Shelton wants to play them, then they will do the same to him. Shelton is transferred to solitary confinement. Nick goes to meet him. Shelton considers Reynolds worthy of death for making a deal to save Darby, but blames Nick for his death. Because Nick did not fulfill the deal on time, and warns Nick to stick to his agreements with Nick. Nick then gives Shelton the bracelet that Shelton's daughter once made for him and says that his wife and daughter will not be happy with his actions. Sarah has not been able to obtain Shelton's estate records due to the law, but he wants to circumvent the law with the help of a friend. Jonas has managed to find a man in the government who has a history of working with Shelton. The man explains that Shelton was inventing ways for the government to kill people in different countries that no one else could. He says that Shelton is a genius who plans all his actions and will kill anyone who was guilty in his case. And Nick and his colleagues can't stop him. Nick gets worried and tells Sarah to go out of town for a few days with her boyfriend Chester. Also send some protectors to Nick's family. Nick and Jonas go to Judge Birch to ask him to impose stricter restrictions on Shelton. The judge explains that Shelton is already in solitary confinement and due to the rules, she cannot keep him there for more than a week. The judge agrees to impose stricter restrictions on Shelton for a while longer. At this moment, the judge's phone rang. She answers and the phone explodes in her head. Nick goes to meet Shelton again. Shelton explains that his actions are not for revenge but to change the system. He also accuses Nick of making deals with murderers to maintain his record of winning cases. He says there are people helping him along the way that Nick can't understand. Nick is worried about Shelton killing his family. Shelton offers a new deal. He must be released and all charges dropped by 6 a.m. or he will kill everyone. It is 6 a.m. and nothing happens. They think there is no danger now, so they decide to return home to rest. Nick asks Sarah when she will introduce her boyfriend Chester to him. Sarah says he will know him soon. Sarah gets into the car, but when she starts the car, some cars explode and Sarah is killed along with several other justice officials. 
Upon investigation, they find that the cars were blown up with an unidentified bomb. But there was no bomb in Nick's car. The mayor is very angry and accuses Nick and Jonas. Nick guarantees that he won't let anyone get killed again. Nick sends his wife and daughter to another city for a while. Nick returns home and there is a framed photo of Nick and Darby shaking hands after the court. Along with Dunnigan, Nick makes an appointment with Shelton outside the prison. Nick attacks Shelton and blames him for killing six innocent people. He then explains that if he hadn't made a deal with Darby, they might have lost in court and both Darby and Ames would have gone free. Shelton disagrees with him. Nick asks him to end it, but Shelton replies that he's just warming up and wants to start a full-scale war. He says he wants to destroy the entire justice system on their heads. Jonas and Nick are talking. Jonas asks if they themselves are to blame for what happened. A little later, Nick says that he blames himself. Because instead of trying to change the justice system, it became a part of it. They are going to participate in the press conference. At that moment, someone disables their car's electrical system with a mechanical weapon, then shoots at the car that Jonas is in and kills him. The mayor blames Nick for the death of Jonas. Nick decides to resign, but the mayor does not agree. He appoints Nick to replace Jonas as the prosecutor. Nick receives an email from Chester, Sarah's boyfriend, who has sent him Shelton's financial information. Nick matches the information with industrial state sold over the last 10 years to find the Shelton state. Nick finds a place near the prison. And without following the rules of entering a private property, he enters the place together with Dunnigan. They find out that Shelton has built a tunnel to the prison. And he keeps all the necessary equipment for his programs there. Then they want to go to Shelton's solitary cell through the tunnel to arrest him, but they realize that Shelton is not there. Shelton is entering the municipal building with the uniform and identification card of a cleaner. Nick finds out that Shelton has hacked all the prison cameras and has access to them in the tunnel. Then Nick sees evidence that makes him realize what Shelton's plan is. They rush to the city hall but decide not to use special forces so that Shelton doesn't find out about their plan. The mayor plans to hold a meeting with all the officials. Shelton plants a bomb in the building and leaves. Nick and Dunnigan enter the building with a bomb disposal expert. They find Shelton's bag, and after opening the bag, they realize that the bomb will be activated by a phone. Nick doesn't allow the mayor to be informed, because if they find out and leave the building, Shelton will quickly detonate the bomb, so he makes another plan. Shelton returns to the tunnel and the police find out. Shelton returns to solitary confinement, but Nick is already there. Nick asks Shelton to stop. Shelton answers that he wants to make a new deal? But Nick replies that he will not deal with any killers again. He accepted Shelton's words about the weakness of the system. But Shelton says not all people understand yet and he has to do the final work. Then he calls the phone connected to the bomb. At this moment, we find out that Nick put the bomb under Shelton's bed, Nick and Dunnigan close the cell doors and quickly run away. The bomb explodes and Shelton is killed. Here the story ends. If you enjoy from our video, please like and subscribe to our channel.